So good evening everybody and welcome. Uh, I just want to start off by saying thank you for watching this and I hope you get something out of it. If you do, please go ahead, like, and subscribe the video. I know everybody asks for that. I try not to post videos about nothing. Uh, I try and only post them when I think I have something to say or an answer to a question that I've been asked or anything of that nature. Uh, not just posting videos for the sake of posting videos. So without further ado, what I want to talk about is considerations for a carry pistol. And um, we're going to kind of touch on caliber choice because I don't really think you can have a carry pistol conversation without at least it coming up. Uh, but there are a million videos from other people, actually probably a million videos on this topic so we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it this is more of things to just consider before purchasing your firearm with regards to logistics um, and I know that sounds kind of crazy and it sounds kind of weird but I'm going to talk about three pistols that I have here on the table and kind of go through some of the pros and some of the cons just from a logistical standpoint uh, with absolutely nothing to do with the pistol itself. I will give a brief of this is what I like, this is what I don't like, uh, because I already have them out and I'm already talking about them, but that's not the purpose of the video. So we're going to go ahead and move this out of the way. Um, and we'll go ahead and start with the PDP. Uh, so this is kind of a newcomer to the game. So this is a Walther PDP with an RMR on top of it. Um, so... One of the things about some kind of obscure pistols like this one, I'll go ahead and zoom out for a second. I apologize for the table, um, is things are more difficult to find. So I'll go ahead and give you an example. It comes with two magazines, uh, which is fine because most holsters only have one magazine pouch. But when you start looking for other magazines, it can be a little bit difficult. So again, this is a PDP 3.5F. Um, I like it a lot. It hasn't let me down yet. I also have not put it through its paces. I did get the excess big dots suppressor height sights uh, so that I could co-witness through the, the dot. Now, one of the things I do like about the Walthers is they literally use Glock sights for like the Glock 17, the 19, the 26, the 34, the, all the 40 cals that are on that same size, they use those sites, which is very, very convenient because they're easy to purchase uh, and they install the exact same way. So if you already have a Glock sight pusher tool, you have everything you need to work on it. Uh, this is kind of, uh, I guess the size I would say is right between a 19 and a 26. So if you wanted something to kind of fill that gap, this fits that very well. Um, here's some of the things I don't like. Um, the magazines are not common, like I said. So it, it, they're, the, the PDP compact magazines are really, I haven't seen them in any stores, uh, other than, um, kind of some stores that really, really, really carry Walther things. So I don't mean like your big box stores. I mean, uh, like uh, the dealer I got it from carries quite a bit of Walther stuff and apparel, and he's a, a Walther person, so he keeps the PDP F magazines, or the PDP Compact, which is the F is also a PDP Compact magazines in stock. Um, but you can use the full-size PDP magazines. I got this one from Runnings. Um, I have seen them at like Sportsman's Warehouse, Cabela's, Bass Pro. I'm pretty sure they'll, they'll have these as well. Uh, I just haven't really looked for them, but they're not going to be in every mom and pop gun shop and they're not super common, um, like the Glock magazines are. Um, the other thing that comes with not having a common pistol is the holster to carry it. Uh, so this is a crossbreed. They make it. I love it. It, uh, it works very well. I have no complaints about it. Um, please look those guys up if you're looking for a really awesome holster at a really affordable price. Um, they're really good, but you do have to order it and it does come, uh, not right away. And that's one of the things that I don't like about getting 
guns that are kind of off of the mainstream. Um, it, whether or not how good it is, how bad it is, is not what we're talking about. Um, when I bought this, even at somebody who carried the PDP compact magazines, full-size PDP magazines, all kinds of 9mm ammo, all kinds of sights, um, RMRs, all of those kinds of things, they did not have a holster for this pistol the day I bought it. I had to order it, which is something I don't like. Now, I get it, right? You're going to shoot your pistol before you carry it. But I did not have the ability to purchase everything in the store and go to the range and immediately practice with it because of getting the holster. And that just goes into logistics. And it's something you need to be considerate of. Also, if you're looking at one of these, these plates, these Walther plates are very expensive. They're about $130 for the plate. And you have to have it to mount any kind of an optic. If you buy the pistol new... When you go to register it with Walther, you can purchase, or you not purchase, but they give you a plate, one plate. So for that, that's why I bought this new, was because by the time I bought the plate, the used one was the exact same price. So it was not pur worth purchasing a used one for the money to save because I would have spent the exact same amount of money to get the plate to put the site that I already had on it. Um... And that's really all I have to say about it. Again, uh, I'm going to do a series on these. Uh, I'm switching for this to be my carry pistol for about the next year. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to put a thousand rounds through it. So this has not been fired a whole lot. I haven't fired it at all since I put the sights and the red dot on it. And I think I only put three or four magazines through it with the factory sights just to because I got it and I wanted to go plinking with it. Uh, so next we're going to talk about something else. This at one time was a very, very, very popular gun. Still is very popular. This is a HK-45. Um, tactical, so the 45T. And again, this is another one that I want to talk to everybody about because I have had a horrible time uh, trying to acquire a holster for this. So the other thing, and this is something I want to talk about when you put your lights on your pistols, go with a common light. It's one of the mistakes I made. This is a Surefire X400, not the 300. So the difference is it has a laser on the bottom. I like it a lot. Um, but it does not work with any light-bearing holsters that I have found. I have not found a single light-bearing holster for this. So um, if you're going to do something weird or obscure, make sure that it is actually compatible. Obviously, I have plenty of Surefire, so I take this off. Um, when I want to carry it and it stays on uh, when it goes into the safe or wherever I decide to put it because I like having the laser on the bottom of it. Um, it's also, it makes it look cool uh, and a 45T comes with threaded barrels and suppressor height sights. It's really made to run a suppressor on. Um, again, not an uncommon pistol, but very, very difficult to get a holster for. Uh, even just the 45 tactical, the HK45 tactical, because of the suppressor height sights and the extended threaded barrel. So that's something I would very strongly recommend you look into prior to purchasing anything is, uh, can you get a holster for it and does it fit the needs of what you want, right? Obviously this one's 45, this one is 45 because 45 is subsonic, um, and that means I don't have to do anything to it other than put the can on it in order to make it much quieter. Uh, subsonic rounds are just quieter than supersonic rounds. And almost all 45 is subsonic. So you don't have to do anything to it other than put your can on. Which is one of the reasons that actually that's the biggest reason I bought this. I don't like to mix up calibers. Um, but I understand the advantages. So I went ahead and went with it. The last thing I want to talk about is all reliable, right? So this is a Gen 2 Glock 17C. So it's factory ported. Um, this is, this pistol has been through the ringer, as you can tell. This is my carry pistol. has been for almost 10 years now. Um, and has been with me, man, everywhere. Again, Surefire X400 on it. You're actually able to get a Surefire X400 holster for a Glock 17 
And I also have a bunch of Surefire X300s that I swap this with um, just so that I can have more options. But again, this pistol stays out. Um, so I don't really worry about how difficult it is to find a holster. Uh, my recommendation is to get a Surefire X300. Whichever variant that fits you best, that's the one I would recommend. Um, I like Surefire a lot. I haven't had any issues with them and I've owned a ton of them. The other thing is almost every gun store will have Glock sights. Almost every gun store will have Glock magazines. I mean, they are just all over the place. Nine millimeter is very common. You can replace the parts very easily. They're very, very readily available. Um, I think I've worn out most every part on this. So I got it used. I got it from a guy who used it for competition. And it was pretty much all shot out. And I completely gutted it and put every broken or worn part and replaced it. And this is probably the best shooting handgun I own. And again, it is a Gen 2 Glock 17. Uh, it's very old. I think when I looked up the serial number, it was made in like 1989. Um, which I know that doesn't seem like it's that old, but uh, this thing goes through the paces. Um, so... I'm not one of the Glock fanboys. I like a lot of different firearms. But one of the things I do have to say about the more common handguns is the ease of getting parts, getting magazines, getting sights, getting holsters. Um, it's just more convenient. And if you are just getting into shooting uh, or you're just getting into concealed carrying and you don't really have an established routine, getting something that different options are readily available could make it a lot easier for you to stick with program compliance and what i mean by that is uh if you get something that's common right a uh, glock an mmp um, something along those lines something very common uh, that is sold almost everywhere every gun store that i think i've been into for the last five to eight years i have seen glock magazines M&P magazines, Glock holsters, and M&P holsters. And getting one, getting that and getting something that will allow you to experiment and allow you to buy things and allow you to see what you like and what you don't like and allow you to train because it's readily available, uh, I have found makes program compliance much, much, much easier. There's a, a slew of phenomenal guns available in the market but not all of them has have the logistical support uh, in order to make them feasible for somebody who's just getting into it. So I've been carrying a firearm for as long as I can remember. And I say that not to build my own credibility, but to, to make a point here. I know exactly what I like, and I know through trial and error. And, and this is kind of the way that I like to carry a handgun. Uh, I know I like a leather backing on a Kydex holster. I like the leather backing because it just makes it a little bit more comfortable. I like thicker leather. Uh, so I think this is buffalo hide. And I like it to sit very high because I have kind of a bigger belly. And I don't want my body to touch the firearm. Um, I also like how much the retention is adjustable. And I like that I can remove this and move it to the other side. So this is how I set up to carry in winter. Uh, where everything is all together but when i shift to summer the magazine pouch moves to the other side because i'm wearing less clothes so i can't support this big mass of stuff right up front at uh at my uh at my 12 o'clock or, or my one o'clock position so uh, i'll kind of move this back to usually right around wherever halfway between one and two would be uh on like a slightly further back appendix carry uh, or even further forward and have it completely center line, like truly appendix carry. And then I'll move this to the other side and then make sure that when I'm looking in the mirror, I can't see anything. And <clears throat> for me, that's important. But the point I'm trying to make is this was, uh, I think this holster, this whole setup, everything was right around $160. Uh, which again is very very affordable because everything costs extra you can get these for much cheaper but if you don't order like all the different colors and you you want a little bit thinner leather and you don't want it to sit quite as tall and you don't want the magazine pouch or or you know whatever 
uh, everything you do uh, adds a little bit of money because they're custom. But the point is, that's a lot of money to spend to not like something. And it's kind of a turnoff for people if they spend that much money and then they don't like it. They're all, they're not just most people that are just getting into it are not just going to turn around and go spend another $160 on a quality holster. And the nice thing about getting something common like this is I've seen these things at grab bins and pawn shops. It just it got turned in with the gun, it got sold used, it got whatever. Whatever the case may be for 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Um and you're a lot more likely to buy it and try it if it's not a substantial amount of money. And that's the other thing is, you know, you get a Glock and you can go on eBay and type in Glock 17 holster and, and find them used. And there are thousands, literally thousands of them. And a vast majority of them are less than $30 just because their holsters are just not worth a lot of money used. Uh, like on my Glock 19 that I wear, um, when and I carry it in a shoulder holster for reasons like um, <clears throat> if I'm in a place that I know is not firearm friendly but it is still legal, um, I don't want it on my belt. And the only reason for that is if I bend over or whatever and my shirt comes up, I, I just don't want people to know that I have it. And for me, it's an acceptable risk of, hey, it'll take longer to get to it. Again, that's not the answer for everybody. It's just the answer for me and it's just the truth. Um, but I think, and it's a Galco, and I think I got it for between sixty and eighty dollars shipped to me. That was a few years ago, um, but new. It's somewhere around two hundred to two hundred and thirty dollars. Um, so, it, getting getting something that's common will allow you to experiment with a bunch of different holsters, and it won't cost you a ton of money. They're very common. You can get them used. Uh, and everybody has them and you can if you break it if you damage it uh, anything you can replace that holster that day with little to no effort and little to no searching and little to no work um, I hope this video has really really helped you and I it's just something to consider and uh, if you're new to the gun community welcome uh, first and foremost um, and please do your research. And the most important thing I can tell you is your responsibility to get better with the firearm never ends. Uh, purchasing a firearm and getting your concealed carry permit, uh, or if you're in a constitutional carry state, purchasing a firearm um, is only the first step. So please do not let your firearms journey end with simply owning a weapon. At that point, you can potentially make yourself um, a liability. So I'm not discouraging anybody from taking any kind of classes. I fully encourage it. Any class, anywhere, so long as they have decent reviews and the instructor is safe is better than no class. Uh, pay for training, get training, get training, get training, get training, get training. I guarantee you within about an hour and a half to two hours where you live, somebody is running a class at some point. And I also guarantee you that a vast majority of your shooting ranges have classes that they teach. And you can Google them. You can Google shooting ranges near me. You can call them. They'll be giving a class. They'll be all, and I don't mean a, con, a concealed carry class. And that's where you stop. I mean real life training. Um, take the concealed carry class. Learn the laws. Get some training. And uh, welcome to the community. And I really hope this video has been helpful.